Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Nattering with the Knights. I am totally excited and pumped to sit down. Uh, it's very early morning on um, a public holiday in Hong Kong to speak with my very best friend, Katie Monaco. Just a little bit of background here, myself and Katie met in 2005 and before we started recording this episode we were just doing a little bit of a, a backtrack on the amount of years that we've known each other and we figured out that it's been a whopping 16 years of a friendship that has consisted of meeting in America and then basically us being on opposite sides of the world, yet our friendship is still as strong as it ever has been and throughout that friendship we have obviously like every friendship we've had you know tests and we've had to lean on each other and we've been through quite a bit and one thing that has been a staple in our ever evolving friendship has been nutrition and it's something that Katie is very passionate about and that is now um, her career path. She is a certified nutritionist and she is my go-to for anything in terms of if I'm feeling a little unwell, if my stomach's maybe a little bit off, she can give me some kind of food to, to start eating or a recommended supplement. And that's basically how Katie leads her life with her family. She is very much about how like food can heal, how we can help ourselves through what we eat and, and the supplements that we take. And I'm really excited to be able to share some of this knowledge with our students and our listeners today because throughout this whole pandemic we've seen health take a little bit of you know a beating you know things like exercise gyms have been shut down it's almost been like let's try and fix the pandemic when we could probably help it with our health and what we eat and what we do with our bodies so this is going to be I feel it's going to give a lot of people some knowledge bombs it's going to give some people some more ideas of what they can do. I'd just like to state that, you know, we're not going to be saying, you know, a, you know, everyone likes a treat. Everyone likes a cookie or a bit of cake. But we're, we're trying to talk here about how we can actually help ourselves be better. We're not going to sit here and prescribe you a diet. So first of all, let me say welcome to Katie. It's great to be talking with you in uh, South Carolina right now. Yes, thank you so much. I'm so excited too. See my best friend and talk nutrition, my favorite subject. I know it's, it's been a, we've been trying to do this for, for quite some time. And obviously this pandemic has not only been messing with us in different countries, it's just, there's been so much going on. So I'm going to kind of jump right in because there's so much that, that we talk about all the time with nutrition. And I kind of want to make sure we get all that covered. For, sure. for if you obviously if you google nutrition if you talk about nutrition there are tons of, of different advice that you can be given there's contradictory advice there's you know we've learned throughout the years i mean i especially feel like i've learned you know carbohydrates are good for you carbohydrates aren't good for you fat's good for you fat's not good for you, you know sugar's the worst thing in the world kind of to help our students out to help our listeners out can you give us like a kind of a 101 a basic like introduction or a basic outline of what is nutrition? Yeah, 100%. That's a really good question because um, like anything in life, it really depends on who you ask. Um, and when it comes to nutrition, there is so much information out there, just as you said, so many conflicting um, theories about how we should be eating. And my answer to that is, um, in two parts, because there's really not a one size fits all. Um, and that's really what bothers me about a lot of like diet plans, because what works for your body might not work for my body. And the mm -hmm. only way we would know that is by eating that way and seeing how our body reacts. Um, for a lot of people eating paleo is, you know, the end all be all. For a lot of people, a ketogenic diet um, is really beneficial and has been great for like weight loss and, um, anti-inflammatory and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so you need a certain amount of carbohydrates and you're restricting um, everybody's carbohydrates to like say 25 grams, which is yeah. the standard for a ketogenic diet, um, might leave somebody who's a super active person like yourself, just like laying you know, on the floor yeah. and the because you haven't had enough carbohydrates. So there's not a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. In general, um, what can benefit, I believe, everybody is to really focus on limiting your sugar consumption um, yeah. because I really do believe sugar is the devil in disguise. It is 
it's been proven in studies to be more addictive than cocaine. Um, mm -hmm. It lights up the similar um, pleasure centers in our brain as cocaine does. And actually there's been a couple um, tests on lab rats where like 90% of the lab rats will actually choose the sugar infused water over the cocaine infused water. Um, so it is, it is a drug. Um, mm -hmm. Just like any other drug out there, it is extremely addictive and extremely um, bad for your health. And that's mostly, it's not just because of, um, you know, weight gain and things like that, but more importantly, it's because it causes inflammation in your body, mm -hmm. which is the root cause of all disease. So for me, I would recommend to everybody, limit your sugar consumption as much as possible. Um, number one, refined sugars. I mean, um, mm -hmm. the just even the worst thing you can really put in your body like if you're doing any kind of sugary sodas candies um those simple carbohydrates anything sweet that you know yeah. has added sugar um really try to just limit those um because again it's just going to feed those that inflammation in your body which can lead to all sorts of um really nasty yeah. disease and states of our body that we don't want to be in. So I would say limit your sugar consumption and increase your consumption of healthy fats. Um, and I'm probably going to go back to reducing sugar and healthy fats yeah. to every question you ask me because I really believe that is such like a staple of just um, maintaining a healthy state because mm -hmm. good fats are not only going to feed our our organs, they're, they're vital for how our heart functions, how our brain functions. Um, it's not just about like, oh, I wanna eat these healthy fats so I don't eat sugar and lose weight. It's how is your body functioning? Is your heart beating mm -hmm. correctly? Are you, are you, are you have brain fog? Is your brain processing yeah. correctly? We wanna eat for function of our body, not, you know, it's just so much more than calories. Mm -hmm. Increase those good fats, um, omega-3s, salmon, um, avocados, nuts, seeds, uh, olive oils, coconut oils, those kinds of things are just so, so vital to get into our diets throughout the day. Okay. That so I, for your first question. No, no I, I like it. that because <laughs> <laughs> people, you know, they can, they can replay this back and they, they can listen to that and take the notes down. But I think it's just, it is really important to get that, you know, that information across. Now, when you talk about sugar, you talked about the refined sugars, you know, the added sugar. Can you yep. give me a little bit of help here with like fruit? Because obviously we know fruit has got sugar in, but yep. from my, my very limited basic understanding, I would assume because that's not an added sugar, it's a natural sugar. What kind of, is there a difference there? How does that impact our bodies? Yeah, there's definitely a difference because, um, Natural sugar, anything that is a whole food, which means comes from nature, it's not processed, mm -hmm. is just yeah. so much easier on our bodies to not only digest, but then to utilize, to turn yeah. into fuel. Um, when you're eating empty calorie foods, like anything with refined sugar, it does nothing for you nutritionally. Um, mm -hmm. And in fact, it's gonna do some harm, um, especially when it comes to like our gut flora, which is so, so major when we're talking to new about nutrition, um, the state of your gut health is, is, is the foundation of a healthy body. And when mm -hmm. you're eating these refined sugars, you're feeding all the bad bacteria in our gut. Um, and when you're feeding the bad more than you're feeding the good, the, the, the balance of the good and bad becomes, um, out of whack. Okay. So, very dumbed down way to say it. Um, mm -hmm. But so the refined sugar will feed the bad bacteria in your gut. What feeds good bacteria in your gut? Um, food with live probiotics like um, kombucha, sauerkraut, any fermented type of vegetable. Um, those are going to repopulate all those good uh, bacteria in your gut. Mm -hmm. And then food high in fiber are what is going to actually feed that healthy bacteria. So when you eat those processed um, and refined sugars, you're feeding the bad, which yep. is obviously bad for your gut health. Um, you're causing inflammation in your body. Now, when you eat a, a fruit, for example, with natural sugar, um, it is sugar. And I would advise most people to, um, you know, you don't want to go crazy on the fruit, use it mm -hmm. sparingly throughout your day. But if you're holding a Snickers bar in one hand and an apple in the other, obviously your, your best bet is the apple. Um, right. 
but I, you know, some people, especially some of my friends with kids um, that are very picky eaters, they're just throwing fruit at them all day long because they're thinking, well, it's a fruit and it's healthy, mm-hmm. but your, your blood sugar, sugar levels can be affected. It, everything needs to be um, in balance. So mm-hmm. you don't want to be crazy, but yes, fruit is, is by no means poor for your health and it's not going to damage you in any way unless you're overdoing it. Um, so if you have a diet that's also very high in like refined sugars and you're also eating fruit, you're still, your total grams of sugar for the day is still going to be astronomically higher yeah. than it should be. Um, okay. I think the, the key word there that I'm going to pick up on is, uh, which I think is going to be really important here is that you said it's about balance. Like mm-hmm. you, you know, obviously, like we said at the beginning, we're not saying don't eat the, the Snickers bar, but it's probably like in moderation, like you don't need yeah. a refined sugar treat maybe every day. Um, right. If it is something that it is that you do feel you need that, like, you know, again, a, a smaller amount maybe, but yeah, trying to keep those, those sugar levels uh, low, because I do definitely agree with you on that. And obviously we've talked a lot about this and you've had multiple <laughs> text messages from me saying, I feel like this and what could this be? Yeah. And I recently have um, been working here on my, my gut health because I've been noticing a lot of bloating and with actually a big shift in the removal of sugar, uh, my actual gut health is a lot better but I genuinely have noticed that lack of inflammation like in my joints like I as as you know I've had two knee surgeries and uh, I do train a lot in the gym and I like to run and, and be active and I used to notice that sometimes they'd be like my knees would be quite tight or my shoulders would be quite sore and since the I mean don't get me wrong it's not fully gone there's not a, a you know I still occasionally have a Percy pig. <laughs> um, but there's a definite shift in, in that achiness and that, and I feel that inflammation and it's just crazy that by removing or reducing, and I don't eat a lot of sugar anyway, as it is, but just reducing that even more, the difference you can feel in your body. Absolutely. Yeah. If I have, if any client ever comes to me with any type of like arthritic pain mm-hmm. or if, just like you, if they're very active and they've had some type of injury and they're having lots of um, like aches and pains, number one thing is to go on some type of anti-inflammatory um, diet. And, and number one, when we're trying to reduce inflammation is to get rid of sugar. So that is so, so huge. If you're trying to heal um, from anything, whether it be a surgery or just like a sprained ankle or whatever the case may be, um, you really want to be leery of sugar. And another point on sugar is that you mentioned like the difference between natural sugar and refined sugar. Mm-hmm. At least here in the U.S., cane sugar is one of the top genetically modified um, crops. And right. um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of like, you know, GMOs, GMOs, mm-hmm. genetically modified organisms. Why are they so bad for us? Uh, well, there's, there's a lot of reasons they're poor for our health, but um, Namely being, you know, there's also been studies in rats showing um, like high consumption of GMOs actually leading to like tumors um, and scary disease like that. Um, Not to mention they just wreak havoc on our gut health, um, which is what we what just talked about. And it's so, so important because when something is genetically modified, um, it's genetically modified to be like resistant to a lot of the pesticides. So these things are just sprayed like crazy with really, really toxic chemicals um, mm-hmm. that destroy your gut health and can also, again, lead to like some scarier things down the road that we want to really try to avoid. So um, that's another issue that I have with refined sugar. Obviously, you can buy if you want to um, splurge, because of course, everybody likes to splurge. My go-to is ice cream. That is my mm-hmm. guilty pleasure. But I buy organic ice cream that I know has not... Um, doesn't contain sugar that's been sprayed with pesticides, mm-hmm. um, genetically modified by any means. So just to me, like put it in your consciousness to um, not say I'm never going to eat a candy bar again, but like when you're reading the ingredients or if you're looking like here, if it's genetically modified, um, it has to be labeled. So yeah. I don't know if it's like that there, but just to like open the consciousness mm-hmm. to say, like, hey, maybe this may not be good for my health versus this is going to make me gain weight or this is going to prevent yeah. me from losing weight. It's just, it's, it's, there's a bigger picture. And I think yeah. that's many people like yourself. 
um, learn by once you remove sugar, it's like, oh, because if you went to a typical doctor, um, which is where, you know, I, I have a lot of issues because there's just so many um, health ailments that can just so easily be fixed through nutrition and supplements yeah. and herbs. Where if you would have gone to a doctor and said, um, you know, I'm having all this pain in my knees mm -hmm. post surgery, they would have prescribed you a pain medication. Yeah. Um, where, and you know, there's definitely a time and place, but there's lots of things that you can do to prevent that from happening in the first place, which is, I just think what I love about nutrition because I've helped so many people um, wean off pharmaceuticals because they're just no longer necessary once they start mm -hmm. eating what their specific body needs at that time. Yeah, that's a, a massive, definitely a, a gain that I've learned again through, you know, you going on your journey of your, your nutrition uh, qualification and also just experimenting with my myself as well. Now, right. I, I know as well, like nobody always wants to be checking the, the labels of food. And I'd really like what you said there about rather than thinking, what are the calories? Is this going to be beneficial or like, is it going to impact my health? like just having a look at some key ingredients really more so. And I definitely start to do that. Things like um, palm oil is like a, a no, like a no go now. I've read enough about that and, and seen enough about that and the dangers of that being, you know, in excess in your diet. I'm just going to kind of flip to like a student head here at school. Um, obviously during a pandemic we've had a lot of changes at school in terms of where students eat and kind of what they can really bring in they're trying to you know either say bring in like a, a little snack or they've got like a, a lunchtime sitting in in a basically a sports hall where they sit at a little desk by themselves with their own food and it's kind of raised a few concerns not just as a teacher but as a PE teacher and someone that's quite invested in their health a few kind of concerns with what they're choosing to eat or if they're choosing to eat at all now I understand that you know when you've got a 15 minute window almost to eat your lunch you one asking them to eat very quickly which we know is not great for digestion so that can leave people uncomfortable we'll probably come back to that in a little bit but it's more about what what we're choosing or what they're choosing to eat at that time we do see um, typically a lot of like white processed breads for like maybe sandwiches. There can be a lot of, again, which is not a bad thing. I enjoy an Oreo every now and again, but like, you know, the little six pack of Oreos is maybe a snack. There is a lot of uh, rice and a lot of noodles. That's something that, you know, I appreciate here, but I suppose what I'm trying to get to is like for a student going through a, well, if we don't include actually the hours in school, the journey to and from school as well, you're probably looking like an eight, nine hour day for a student. Yeah. What kind of, what's like really kind of the important message here for them to be eating during the day that's, that's maybe quick, that's easy, that's still tasty, but it's going to be able to make them function? Yeah, that's a really good question because, I mean, I remember my grade school days and... Um, I ate terribly because, mm. and, and I didn't even have an excuse other than everybody else um, was bringing, you know, convenient snack foods also. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good if we can just um, change the awareness of, of kids in school at these ages, because it just makes it so much easier to like build healthy habits now and to really understand why we want to be putting these foods in, not just because sugar is bad, you know, we mm -hmm. need to understand how it's affecting us. Um, if you're in school and you're snacking on processed sugary foods, um, like white bread sandwiches, packs of Oreos, um, candies, things like that to get through your day, um, not only is it poor for your gut health, everything in your body, but it's not going to leave you very clear up here. So you're mm -hmm. going to experience a lot of brain fog when you're when you're a sugar burner, which means your body is just relying on sugar to get through the next yeah. hour. A lot of brain fog, which is obviously counterproductive to being in school. You're there to learn and to yeah. grow. Um, and that's really hard when you're having problems concentrating or, you know, you can't sit still or you just are so distracted that you can't focus on what your teacher is trying to tell you. And that's, that's a direct effect of sugar. Um, okay. And, and, and once you remove 
all those processed sugars from your diets. Um, whenever I do like a purification or detox kind of thing, obviously sugar is a no, no on those types of things. Mm -hmm. And I can, I'm always so blown away at how clear my mind is after, mm -hmm. you know, two or three weeks doing some type of detoxification where I'm not having any sugar. Um, yeah. You will sleep better. Your, your mind will be more clear. You'll be more receptive to what your teachers are trying to instill in you. Um, your energy will be better when you switch from a sugar burner to a fat burner, which is um, when your body relies on fat for energy mm -hmm. versus sugar for energy. Um, it actually gives you, it gives you more of a sustained period of energy throughout the day instead of I'm going to eat these Oreos and have a lot of energy for the next two hours, then I'm going to crash. Yeah. You don't experience that when your body is a fat burner. So that means um, packing snacks like if anyone has a blender, you could do mm -hmm. like a big smoothie in the morning. I'm a huge proponent of smoothies because they're so easy. You can pack so much yeah. nutrition into a cup this size and mm -hmm. be set, you know, for four hours. Um, and you can take that in a little, you know, if you have a plastic water bottle or um, like a coffee mug or something that you mm -hmm. can take while you're in transition to school or drink in your first class. I don't know if that's allowed, but just something to get you a really substantial nutritious start um, mm -hmm. and when you're doing a smoothie if you're going to do a smoothie in the morning or any time throughout the day um, it's also a great snack like before or after you work out after school you want to make sure you get plenty of fat and this is the main thing mm -hmm. that so many people miss because if you don't get good fats in there you're going to be hungry 45 minutes after you drink your smoothie so yeah. when i make my smoothies my kind of rule of thumb is i i I do mostly greens. That mm -hmm. should be the main base. Spinach is the best because it just absorbs, you know, all the other flavors of the smoothie. So you don't really yeah. taste. If you use something like kale, it's a little more yeah. bitter. <laughs> I like yeah. to, that's a funky apple taste. Yeah. I like spinach. I fill up my, my blender up mostly with spinach. Throw in whatever fruits you like. I keep frozen bananas in my freezer. Um, berries are great because they're low in sugar and high in antioxidants. Really great things that are going to keep your immune system strong. Also, mm -hmm. something really important right now. We, you know, we're trying not to get sick. Um, and then throw in a giant scoop of whatever type of fat, healthy fat you like. Like almond butter is great. Cashew butter, peanut butter. Throw half an avocado in there if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, whatever floats your boat just to get a, a nice um a nice serving of fat because that's really what's going to keep you full to the next yeah. meal a lot of people will tell me oh smoothies they they don't make me full well you're not doing it right yeah <laughs> you're gonna get fat in there and then drink a lot of water between your mm -hmm. smoothie and your next meal and um that's just going to give you a really really powerful really powerful start. That's something you can pack easily if you want to take it and have that, you know, around lunchtime. Yeah. Um, something else that's easy to bring that's a great snack or lunch, hard boiled eggs. I mean, the easiest yeah. thing ever. And if your parents don't want to make them for you, you know, you can, you can put an egg in boiled water and it'll be ready in 10 minutes. And then if you just keep a, cart a carton of those in your refrigerator, you can pack them, take them to school, yeah. peel them and eat them in 10 minutes, dip it in a little mm -hmm. salt if you have it with you or not. Um, Add our favorite hot sauce. Or, or your favorite <laughs> hot sauce. <That's> okay. <laughs> um, you're going to get all those good fats. You're going to get, you know, a good, a good, Calorically, that's just like a perfect meal, high mm -hmm. in fat, low in sugar, a good amount of protein. Um, that's really going to sustain you. You pack a couple of those, you have your smoothie in the morning. Um, yeah. And if you have half a sandwich with peanut butter on it, great. There's a little bit yeah. of carb for you. Um, or other good snacks like, you know, pack nuts, pack cashews, pack almonds, pack pumpkin seeds are amazing. I mean, so many health benefits, tons of magnesium. You could throw a handful of raisins in there if you like, you know, yeah. kind of do homemade trail mix kind of thing. You want to think if you don't have a lot of time to eat um, and you're coming and going from school, you want convenience and you want a lot of bang for your buck. So if you're going to eat a bag of chips mm -hmm. and you have this limited time, you're you're just not getting enough nutrition for yeah. what you need to do throughout the day. So you want to think like super high um, in nutrition meals and you don't want to waste 
for me, it's like, I don't, I'm not going to waste a snack on something that's doing really nothing. It's not giving me yeah. any minerals that I need for the day. It's not giving me any healthy fats that I need for the day. It's just kind of empty. And while yeah. some of them are really tasty, um, and I, I'll be the first to admit I love a good, you know, chip every now and then too, but um, it's just not, it's just not serving me. It's not feeding my body. It's not mm-hmm. helping my body function. In fact, it's working the opposite. So when you're trying to get through a school day and benefit, you're already in school, let's make the most of it and try to like yeah. learn, and grow and exercise and do all the things you want to be able to feed your body. So it actually can sustain a, a day that long. Yeah. I totally agree there. Um, something I probably should have uh, mentioned before, and but obviously all your information can still apply to me, is that we're actually, unfortunately, a nut-free school due to um, allergies and things. But obviously all those tips that you've said about nuts and things like that, they can still be used at like weekends and, and outside of school. And yeah. that was kind of what, what I was going to ask is, nuts is obviously when you, because I'm just going to kind of... Yes, seeds are definitely fine. I think it's just related to like peanuts, nut allergies, that kind of thing. But digressing slightly when, you know, on the IGCSEP, which is our examination class, we teach about um, nutrition, very, very watered down nutrition. And they talk about fats and there's still kind of this, um, I don't know, it's still a kind of a wishy-washy area. And I think the the word fat still has for a lot of people a negative connotation. They just think, well, if I eat fat, I'm going to get fat. And obviously, like we've been talking about, there's balance, there's moderation. We're not, you know, not saying that, you know, and again, there's going to be a difference between fats that you can eat. If you were, you know, again, with the removal of that nut, is there something again, that's quite, because I know that nuts are probably one of the easiest ways to get a good fat amount in. I know avocado, and then we've talked about the healthy oils, but is there, is there kind of anything else that's relatively like an easy access fat that again could help us fuel the day a little bit easier? I, I mean, I, th- I know that a lot of food can be cooked with coconut oil, with good right. olive oils, right. but it's... Well, you can throw, throw, if you can't put peanut butter or almond butter in your smoothie that you want to bring to school, throw a big old tablespoon of coconut oil in. It's okay. so, so good. Throw an avocado in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you're going to bring like, I don't know if anyone would ever pack a salad to school, but some students do maybe, have them. Okay. Well, maybe some, the, if the staff or something, yeah. if you have some, work, um, use straight extra virgin olive oil as your dressing. There is a mm-hmm. beautiful perfect fat right there with just some salt and pepper. I mean, most of the time I don't even use dressing. I just use Straight extra virgin organic, of course, olive oil, um, salt and pepper, and there's my whole extra serving of mm-hmm. fat right there. Avocado is, you know, my favorite food in the whole world. It's a go-to fat. Um, you can spread it on your toast in the morning, bring that. Um, you can even just do like an avocado and cheese and turkey sandwich. Very mm-hmm. easy. Oh. That was a favorite at camp, that sandwich. Oh, oh turkey and avocado. They're just meant yeah. to be together between two yeah. pieces of yeah, so good. Um, toast it if you can. <laughs> toast it if you can. Definitely throw some hot sauce on there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you can do seeds. Seeds are great. Pumpkin seeds. Everyone should have pumpkin seed. I, I seriously have a, a Ziploc baggie of pumpkin seeds that I keep in my car for like if I'm ever to and from whatever driving my kids around and I, I get a snack attack, I eat pumpkin mm-hmm. seeds. They are super high in magnesium, um, which is important for like over 100 processes in our body um, and also very high in fat. So pumpkin seeds are great. You can do, um, yeah, nut free. Nut free is difficult. But like I said, all those things that I mentioned before, you can also yeah. do not in, in school. Um, salmon is a really great um, high in omega-3 fatty acids food, mm-hmm. which is um, so, so important, again, for heart, brain, um, you are not going to gain weight or get fat from eating these healthy fats. Yep. You will gain weight if you're eating these healthy fats and also eating a diet very high in carbohydrates and sugar. Again, back to the sugar. Um, you know, you, it's, it is just the main thing. I could go on about sugar forever, but um, it yep. is really just the thing you really want to avoid. These fats are going to help your body function. We need these healthy fats um, to make cholesterol, which is 
another thing that has been just horribly vilified for years and years and years, just like fat, when actually it, it's very vital um, for all of us to eat cholesterol and be making the appropriate amount of cholesterol, especially for young kids. Um, cholesterol is the precursor uh, for hormone production. So, you know, at a time when your hormones are changing and raging and all of these things, it's very mm -hmm. important that we are getting good cholesterol back to the eggs being a perfect food. Um, so, and 70% and of your cholesterol is actually not from your diet. It's made in your liver. So only 30% your cholesterol is coming through diet. So you want your liver functioning correctly. So it's mm -hmm. producing the correct amount of cholesterol. It's not producing too much, it's not producing too little. So again, back to foods that are gonna feed for that organ. Um, okay. Yeah, that, that's, it, it's a really good question, packing for, for, um, for school. You can also do, well, like I said, if you're doing a sandwich, just throw avocado on there. Um, mm -hmm. Salmon, if you can, I like to do salmon wraps for my kids. I'll roll some salmon from the night before mm -hmm. up in a tortilla with some hummus. Hummus has some fat in it. That's a yep. great food. You can add to any sandwich or wrap or mm -hmm. um, snack. Vegetables with um, hummus as a snack is a great one. Cool. Thank you for that. And again, I suppose sometimes as well, just a little bit of research on these things, you can find all sorts of suggestions on the internet um, about yeah. what, you know, different snacks that you can have. Now, one thing that has always been a huge thing when, when I was particularly, well, growing up the whole time, definitely going through school, you know, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And yeah. again, it's another thing that on the whole, not every student, obviously, but there is a big group of students. And I know there's also adults that kind of skip breakfast that, you know, that they don't have that understanding of it being the most important meal of the day. And I suppose what I'm going to ask is, would you agree? Is it the most important meal of the day? Or is it just something that we've been told to do so that we eat breakfast? <laughs> That's a really good question. Again, it's going to depend who you ask. Okay. Me personally, I do not think it's the most important meal of the day by any means. Um, if, if you're curious, I would recommend for everybody to Google intermittent fasting. Uh, it's kind of like a newer, I, I hate to say trend, but, but kind of, it, they're just learning more about it, what intermittent fasting is. And mm -hmm. um, basically it's when you restrict your, your eating window um, mm -hmm. to certain hours of the day, and then you're fasting obviously the other hours of the day. Mm -hmm. So Ideally, everybody um, would be fasting. I mean, I'm not talking about small kids here. I would say like teens and up. Um, yeah. Ideally, you would be fasting for like 14 to 16 hours of the day. And then you're eating all your food, you know, within those other hours. So okay. if you're skipping breakfast. That's just fine with me. So long as when you do come around to your first meal, that you don't want to go all day long. You need yeah. to, yeah. Breakfast, you need to have solid nutrition by 12 or one o'clock. Um, mm -hmm. And that's if you stopped eating the night before at like seven or eight, you know, if you eat your yeah. dinner early, you're gonna need to eat earlier than that the next morning. Yeah. But when you're in that fasted state of, of ketosis is, is what mm -hmm. your body, it is the best state for, um, to be anti-inflammatory. So again, if you're mm -hmm. struggling with any type of like injury or healing or muscle soreness or any other, inflammatory condition, any type of autoimmune um, issue, you would benefit from an anti-inflammatory um, process like intermittent fasting. Um, it's anti-inflammatory, so it's going to prevent all types of disease and mm -hmm. diabetes, which a lot of, you know, older, I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to say older people, a lot of people are at risk for these days, yeah. just your nutrition is. Um, so I am all about if you don't need breakfast to function, and again, that might work for me, it might not work for you. If you yeah. know your body, the best way is to try it out and see, use yourself mm -hmm. as an experiment, which I know you have done and I have done many times, because that's the only way you're going to know. If you wake up and you, I always say, go with your intuition, listen to your body, no matter what. Um, mm -hmm. If you're feeling hungry and your body's asking for food, then by all means, give it a good breakfast. If you're feeling like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just fine. I'm feeling energized. I'm ready for my day. I can go on. That's fine. But make sure by the time you have your first meal, you pack in some real nutrition. Um, yeah. It's not easy to skip breakfast and then go till 3, 4 p.m. without having 
a solid meal. And when you have that first meal, I would recommend again, high in, high in good fats, mm -hmm. um, a little bit of carbohydrate, like some fruit would be great. Um, maybe have a sandwich with some bread, um, yeah. pack in something really solid so that when you're eating, you know, it's, it's not about restricting your eating window to this period of time and then just eating junk in those eight yeah. hours, pack in the solid nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you're intermittent fasting, because you're already reducing the eating window. So the nutrition, what you choose to put in your body needs to be like pack a really powerful punch. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it depends also if you're, are you an athlete? Are you working out before school? I would definitely, you know, if, if you work out in a fasted state, you need to fuel your body right after you finish mm -hmm. and your muscle yeah. or else you're going against the whole idea of, of working. Yeah. Your body. I think there's a really good point. I think that, the thing I kind of want to pick up there is how you said, you know, if you've, if you've eaten your dinner and then you've obviously gone to sleep, you're obviously during that time in sleep, you, you, would you say you're intimate, you're kind of fasting in that stage because you're not obviously eating anything during sleep to when you wake exactly. up? So you would yeah. go, you would count, you count the fasting starts when you finish eating your dinner mm -hmm. all throughout the night, ideally should be at least 14 hours. I mean, I'm not saying for everybody. I'm saying if yeah. you're interested in intermittent fasting, and this yeah. works for a lot of people, um, 14 hours until you have your next meal. So if you finish dinner at 7 p.m., mm -hmm. you're going to eat until at least 9 a.m. the next morning. Yeah. Not crazy. Um, yeah. Some people like to fast for 16 or 18 hours. And again, it just goes back to what works for this person might yeah. not work for this person. Listen to your body. Don't ever commit to something that's not... Um, beneficial for you but a lot of people will find that helps them switch to become a fat burner mm -hmm. they have less sugar cravings they have less cravings in general they have more energy they have um, less brain fog because again mm -hmm. you're cutting kind of inflammation it's a really yeah. really powerful thing to try if you are interested but again you need to really focus on getting all your nutrition in mm -hmm. in that one window since you are restricted in that sense yes i think the kind of a lot of the pattern I see, you know, having conversations with students is, you know, like, again, I, I, I really can't stress enough how you keep also saying that it's different for every person. Me personally, uh, my, my kind of my intermittent fasting is just when I'm asleep, because I need food, I need fuel, like I wake up, I need my smoothie, I need my breakfast. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and that works for me. And, and right. like you said, if it works for you with doing the intermittent fasting, you know go ahead I think that the the biggest concern I have is that sometimes you know say a student has eaten you know their dinner maybe at like eight nine o'clock uh, typically here the culture is is a little later than, than myself because I'm stringent on being in bed before like nine nine p.m every night but if yeah. they're eating their their dinner say around 9 p.m and then they're waking up the next morning anywhere between six and seven to head to school and then their first meal is and even if it is a meal that they eat because some of the students unfortunately through through their own choices at the moment sometimes don't even eat till the end of the school day which is for some 2.45 some 3.30 for me I'm like right that is a long time with with That's no yeah and I was just going to kind of ask him that how does that impact then like if you're going that amount of time and then obviously yeah. by pro I've got to assume by say you've gone the full school day and it's 3.30 and you are now like right I am starving right. a lot of the the food that you then see students have is exactly. I don't is they're, they're in McDonald's they're in um like there's a lot of local food that you can buy here on the street um it's like some of it's deep fried they're buying this um it's called like bubble tea which is cold tea with a lot of like milk in it how how's that impacting them yeah well that's the first thing I thought of when you said I mean just how long these kids are going without putting mm -hmm. food in is that um when you get to that state of like just pure starvation, yeah, you're not craving a green salad with salmon. You know, mm -hmm. your body is like, I need carbs, I need grease, I need whatever is like, you know, deep fried and in front of me at McDonald's. Um, yeah, and that's the problem when you when you when you let yourself get to that point, um, you're not thinking rationally. Your body is just like hungry for 
calories. Mm -hmm. So again, being more intentional with planning um, is really, really huge because even if you say you don't want to pack a whole lunch for school, yeah. whatever, that's fine. But let's think of two really, really like um, nutritionally dense snacks, um, mm -hmm. pack two hard boiled eggs to have like a mid morning lunch break, bring a smoothie with you. Um, mm -hmm. Those are very easy things to pack and um, be able to kind of like snack on throughout the day so that when you get out of school, well, I'm sure you'll still be hungry at that point. You won't be in that mode of, I'm so starving, I just need junk food and having these like high sugar, high, high in the unhealthy fat cravings. Um, yeah. The whole point of uh, switching from sugar burner to fat burner and again like being in a state of ketosis is it's really going to help you eliminate cravings um mm -hmm. whether your cravings are for salt sugar or fat i mean those are usually yeah. the three main ones and a combination of of the three um so super super important yeah if you're going that long with no nutrition especially as a growing um teenager you just, you need to put in more and it needs to be more intentional throughout your day instead of mm -hmm. like having a big binge at McDonald's and then whatever you're having for dinner, just also so close in those hours just seems, um, yeah, just seems unnatural and not very productive to like how your brain is working, how your body is going to rest and digest that and then be able to rest and digest dinner. Um, pack some healthy snacks, whether it's pumpkin seeds, yeah. hard-boiled eggs, a smoothie, um, a sandwich, I mean, mm -hmm. even just rolled up deli meat would be fine. Like get some, get some protein or fat in throughout your day. Okay. I suppose another thing, and, and you obviously, and I've visited you a lot of times uh, when you've been in California and uh, now in Charleston, that I suppose a big thing, a lot of families, a lot of students face it is the cost of food. Now it's a, it's a big kind of bugbearer of mine that the, the healthy, the organic foods that you that you want to buy and that you know you're told are really good for you are, are, are sometimes, and particularly here in Hong Kong, astronomical in, in price. Mm -hmm. um, particularly if you have a brand that you know you trust, but it's imported here, then it becomes even more expensive. Obviously, right. we have access to fresh um, fruit and vegetables at, at the wet markets, which are a lot cheaper. But then there becomes that whole thing of time. Um, you know, you've got your time constraints of, of preparing. And I'm not obviously, I remember at school, you, you know, your, your parents prepped your, your lunch. And then you kind of when you got to that like 14, 15, 16 age, you maybe started making your own lunch. Again, it was probably a pretty simple sandwich. You grabbed a, a bag of chips, you grabbed mm -hmm. a little snack and maybe an apple or a banana. But the ease here, we... Um, to travel on the, the MTR system, which is like the subway system, we have a, an octopus card and you just top it up with cash. And that is accepted like in every store, every food place. So, you know, the, I suppose what I'm trying to get is that the, the ease of having money on this card and being able to walk into a McDonald's and like literally tapping it against a machine to say, I want, you know, six chicken nuggets and fries at the end of the day is probably going to be a lot easier than having to find, I don't know, again, though, actually, as I say this, there are a lot of sushi places around, you know, where you can like salmon on the, like little um, rice rolls and things like that. But I feel as a kid, you're walking out of school, are you going to be the person that's like, I'm going to go and get my sushi while everyone's, you know, it's, I suppose I'm trying to highlight it. That there's a, it's a cost thing as well, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, I, there is. And, and this is a, a, a challenge that I talk a lot with about uh, with with some of my clients, because everybody is at a different place, um, you know, with what they're comfortable spending on their food. Mm -hmm. For me personally, I look at it like this, you know, for me, my, my greatest value is my health. Mm -hmm. Nothing comes before that, because if you don't have your health, you have nothing. Um, and that is something that just keeps getting reaffirmed and reaffirmed to me throughout my years. But if that is, um, and I totally get, things are different for everybody and, and it is a real concern. Um, I would just say if you can't buy organic because you know, you know that I'm a huge um, mm -hmm. advocate yeah. for buying organic because again, as we talked about those pesticides before, they just wreak, wreak havoc. Mm -hmm. everywhere in our body but specifically in our gut which is just the foundation of everything so um i would say get like a 
you could probably order this on Amazon. They have them everywhere here in health food stores. Some type of like um, organic fruit and veggie wash mm -hmm. um, that you can actually wash all your produce with before you mm -hmm. consume it. If you're just washing it with water, that's not enough to remove the pesticides and everything that have been sprayed onto your food. Okay. Um, so that would be a good option, you know, a good alternative to buying organic. If you can't, if you don't want to spend the money to buy the things that have not been sprayed, get a good, clean, you know, organic spray wash so you can yeah. clean all your products and make sure that you're not consuming any of those toxic chemicals. Um, that is like, that's pretty high up there if I'm going to rank like things you're going to do for your health is to avoid toxicity in every aspect, but especially in our food, um, especially here. And I'm, I'm most probably like this around the world, but I know, especially in the United States, things are so heavily um, sprayed and our, our, you know, our cattle and poultry are all loaded with hormones and antibiotics and just so they can mass produce. Um, it's all a business. It's not about our health. It's about the dollars. So unfortunately, you have to like take those extra measures to either spend more on the organic or clean the non-organic. Um, and then when it comes to fast food, you know, I get it. I was a, I was a teenager too. And it's, it's fun to go out to those yeah. restaurants and like get a cheeseburger and, and, and there is a time and a place for that, you know, but I would say if you're putting fast food in your body more than one time a week, um, you're, you're going to be paying for that later in life. And I, I, I don't like to motivate from fear. Um, usually, but with fast food, I think it's necessary because a lot of the things that you're actually putting in your body is, is, is not even food. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's made in a lab. It's, mm -hmm. it's chemically um, and genetically altered. And um, it's impossible for your body to even turn that into fuel or something to like work with. So again, going back to not only empty calories, but then you're putting in things that can actually be toxic and harmful to mm -hmm. other organs in your body and how you're going to function. So um, do it every now and then have the fun splurge. I would, I, I would say just love yourself enough to choose differently because you know, you want to feel good the next day. And if you're somebody that eats a lot of fast food, it is terribly addicting, just like sugar, because there is sugar in every aspect of that fast food. There's sugar loaded into the ketchup, there's sugar, you know, in all of those white breads, everything breaks mm -hmm. back down to essentially sugar. Um, they even put sugar in condiments like pickle relish and um, the sodas obviously are loaded with sugar. So once your brain is addicted, it's really, really hard to break that addiction. Just like it would be if you're giving up caffeine or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the addiction is, it's a chemical addiction. So you need to give yourself grace don't just say, oh, it's, you know, I tried for one week and it's too hard for me to not eat fast food. I'm, I'm going to go back to eating it all the time. You yeah. need to give yourself at least three weeks to try to break the chemical addiction. And then you can mm -hmm. think clearly about prepping your food better for the next days and weeks going forward. Yeah, I definitely agree with what you said there. And also just that reminder that, yes, we, we have been teenagers and, and we have done the, you know, having the McDonald's, enjoying a, a Taco Bell when I visited you. You know, it's it's not a, like you said, not a case of don't like avoid it. Just you yeah. kind of minimalize and, and be rational with it. Because I think like what you said there, that addiction, that getting in the habit. And once we've got that habit of I need this and, and we've all done it. Like, you know, you have you have one Percy Pig we'll talk about because, you know, we can absolutely destroy a bag of Percy Pigs. Like you have that one and it's like that sugar kicks in and you're like, this tastes really great. And you keep going and you keep going and you keep going. And, and by the way, it's, it's designed for that to happen because yeah. that's how these companies make money. So it's not like you're not the only person that that happens yeah. to. It's a chemical reaction in our brains. Those mm -hmm. pleasure centers light up and we need more. That's our drug. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's exactly what's supposed to happen. And let's say my, my, my biggest um, takeaway, if you're going to continue to like enjoy fast food and go to McDonald's and be a teenager, that's all good and fine. Um, just cut out the, the sodas. You know, that's one very easy say, you know what, I'm, I'm still going to get my cheeseburger and my french fries, go without a soda and get a water instead. You know, that would be doing yourself a huge favor right off the bat. Mm -hmm. We can still enjoy and I know McDonald's these days, 
they do have healthier options. If you still want to go and like be a part of the social aspect, you can um, remove the soda. You can maybe order a salad. You can order mm -hmm. something that's not deep fried. You can, you know, you yeah. can way around. I like that. Now that I'm kind of glad we got onto McDonald's because I, that that I feel is. It's not obviously the only fast food company, but it's one that I see used the most. And I'm, you know, I'm not knocking anyone that, you know, wants to eat McDonald's. If they enjoy that, that's, that's their decision. But I, I found that, I mean, I honestly, hands up, probably can't tell you the, the last time I had one, but foods like that, I suppose what my question is going to lead into is you eat a McDonald's and you usually sometimes feel hungrier after you've had it or you still want to keep eating and, and you're you know you're going for your whatever it is your after school meal or you might be having a treat after something you consume that and then you're almost like well, why am I still hungry why do I want more what's what's kind of the deal with that why does that happen um that would be mostly because you're not putting in nutritionally dense food um and it doesn't have to be McDonald's that could be any nutritionally empty food like mm -hmm. Percy Figs, perfect example, yeah. bag of Doritos. Um, again, I just, I was reading the study because I recently did a, a talk to a group of women about breaking um, your addictions to mm -hmm. salt, fat, and sugar. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I was reading all these studies about how, how big food industries it's no coincidence that you can't put down the Doritos and you can't put down the Percy Picks. Like we just talked about, it's scientifically made. They have had tests and tests and tests of how addictive can we make this snack food? And McDonald's is no exemption. You know, there, it's, there's a reason that they're such a successful business model. It's not because they have the best burger in the world. It's because their customers can't stop eating it. It's designed yeah. to be addictive. Um, so those are empty calories. So you can keep eating and keep eating and keep eating without really feeling um, satiated or full yes. because your body's not getting the nutritional value that it's asking for. Um, mm -hmm. And the brain is in that addictive mode of sugar. So that is a reason if you, if you're putting in something solid with really great healthy fats, a great amount of high quality protein, um, you're not going to be hungry. And, um, I would say, I mean, that everyone's different because I mean, for me personally, if I ate McDonald's and I, the last time I had fast food, I was probably, probably in and out burger when I went mm. back home. Oh, yes. What you have to say is better quality than McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Even so, and I, because I don't eat fast food, it had been years and years since I had had one, I felt like a bomb had been dropped in my stomach. I mean, I felt yeah. like, you know, I gained about 200 pounds after that burger. It felt like it just sucked. Mm -hmm. um, all my energy, all my, I just felt terrible. So some people will have that reaction where they feel like they can just eating and eating. And some people will have the complete opposite where they just feel awful. So, yeah. um, you know, obviously neither are good. And yeah. again, going back to really trying to limit fast food, but if you're having food that is nutritionally dense, uh, and your body is getting the nutritional needs that it's wanting the right vitamins and minerals and fats and proteins, it's not going to continue to ask for more. Um, mm -hmm. But you have to be in tune enough to know, like when you're in the addictive mindset of sugar, or fast food addiction, I mean, those, those low quality oils, like peanut oil, um, corn oil, those are just mm -hmm. as addictive. So that's what all of those fast food um, items are, are okay. cooking. So, right. You know, when you're, when you're nutritional needs are being met, your brain is not going to tell you to continue to eat. But when you're eating those foods where those nutritional um, values are not being met, it's very easy to just keep going like this. And then yeah. you just get stomach ache. And it's not, it's not healthy for any, any part of your body. And it also kind of takes away the enjoyment of, you know, if you're wanting to, if you're wanting to do that because you like it, and then you feel rubbish afterwards, it's like, well, I mean, you, you're just not getting any kind of enjoyment out of eating it. And I know it sounds like boring to then say that, oh, well, I much prefer eating like a, a home cooked whole meal because I know that what's in it. But sometimes, well, I don't think sometimes actually you should be eating your food to enjoy it rather than. Definitely. Just, yeah. Definitely. If you're, if you're eating something, I'm such a huge um, 
advocate for for listening to your own body and and again everyone is so different um some people are very sensitive to some foods and just because you don't have a food allergy doesn't mean you might not have a sensitivity mm -hmm. so the only real way to know that is to have a food sensitivity blood test and i'm not saying everyone should go out and have that but a very good way to like tune in is to keep a journal of your food and just like you said if you eat something and you feel terrible or get a he headaches, any type of skin inflammation like eczema, yeah. breaks on yeah. your face, rosacea, all of those things, 90% of the time can be traced back to something that you ate. A right. food so I find it really helpful um, to keep a journal because sometimes with food sensitivities, you can have symptoms two or three days after you eat the food. So okay. sometimes it's hard to go back and retrace your steps. But if you have a journal, you can say, oh, you know what? I did eat mm -hmm. um, a McDonald's cheeseburger on Monday and it's Wednesday and I woke up with pimples all over my face. Um, maybe it was something in that. And you can kind yeah. of, because there's, our bodies are always talking to us and always trying to tell us what's working and what's not working. And so many people, we live such a fast paced life. If you're, especially mm -hmm. in school and you're doing sports and you're to and from this and that, life is busy. It's, it's easy to disconnect from um, the innate intelligence of our bodies mm -hmm. that's always communicating with us. It's easy to just go through our days and race, race, and race, and we hit our pillow, and we miss all the amazing signs and signals that it's been trying to tell us. So if you can really just be conscious of tuning in, journal your food if you need to, try to piece together what's working for you, what's not working for you. If you eat something and you're not feeling great the next day or the next two, three days, you have a headache, you have whatever, really take a look at that. Um, it's, it's, it's no coincidence. Don't just mask mm -hmm. it with a Tylenol. Really try to retrace your steps and see if there's a nutritional answer um, for why you might be feeling that way. Yeah, I like that. And I suppose the thing that gets me is, and I mean, I don't, I probably do bore a lot of my students with this now, but obviously at 36 years old, it's taken a long time, like 36 years of figuring out what works for me, what doesn't. And I'm still figuring that out with my body. Like, um we recently have well we've had a conversation about this a lot and again it's it's personal preference i think is going to be one of your answers and it works differently for each person there's been a couple of questions um about this amongst my friends and staff at school dairy so you know as a kid again you were told to drink your milk because it made your bones strong. It helped you grow. And I'm a big milk fan. I have always loved it. I can drink a glass of it. I love it on my cereal. Uh, I love cheese. But as the years have gone on and through, like you've just talked about, which I think is really key there, like reactions in your skin and your yeah. body, there's obviously something about dairy that doesn't agree with some people. I know there's lactose intolerance. I know that there are general allergies, but, and obviously again, through your friendship and through your learning, I now don't have any actual uh, cow's milk. I should specify there. I was, I use the oat milk. I use almond milk. We have rice milk. We have coconut milk. And that's through your information that you've given me again, stating that it's each preference it's what you prefer yeah. still can't resist you know a little bit of cow's milk in a cup of tea because i'm british but i actually have got used to having oat milk what's what's the yeah what's the deal there with dairy yes yeah, well again with so many aspects of nutrition um there's so many answers to that question um i in general have no problem with dairy as dairy the problems that I have are this, <laughs> several, but, but, you know, in general, I mean, nutritionally dairy is great. We, we evolved to eat animal product and mm -hmm. there is, you know, great nutritional benefits. I mean, good fats being one of them from eating cheese. Um, I would much prefer you go eat a piece of cheese than have um, gummy bears, you know, mm -hmm. choose the fat over the sugar always. Okay. The problems with dairy, um, like you said, if you have a full-blown dairy um, allergy, you will know. Um, but a lot of people, there's this big scale of intolerance and sensitivities where some people will eat cheese and it will directly affect their digestive system. Either they can be very constipated or have the exact opposite experience mm -hmm. after eating cheese. And obviously neither are good. And again, that's another sign 
of our body talking to us and saying, hey, this doesn't agree with me. If yeah. you constipated after you eat something or have the opposite, um, and we all know what I'm referring to, that's yeah. a very good sign to um, avoid that food. If you can eat dairy and you have no digestive stress, you have no um, skin inflammation, that meaning breakouts, rosacea, eczema, nothing like that, um, no headaches after you eat it, I say eat it in moderation, just like with everything else. Um, another tip when it comes to dairy is um, organic is so, so important. Um, it is in every mm -hmm. arena, but especially when it comes from a cow, because these cows that are not organically raised they are being shot up with um, growth hormones and antibiotics. So they don't mm -hmm. get sick, so they're extra plump, so they can again profit the most yeah. um, raising them, which is then toxic for us, right? Because then we're getting these um, synthetic hormones, which mm -hmm. can do a wrench in our whole endocrine system. Um, and uh, the antibiotics, so, so scary that so much of the antibiotic use, at least here in the United States, I think it's something like, I think it's something like 70% of the antibiotics okay. uh, used are, are, are actually used on our livestock and not like prescribed. So even if you think, oh, I don't take antibiotics, you know, there's a time and a place. You don't want to be having them all the time. But if you're getting them in your, in your food supply, mm -hmm. unconsciously like through non-organic meats and cheeses, um, your body is building your resistance. So when that time comes, when you need the antibiotic, um, you just have a higher Not chance. Of it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So organic and then also, um, raw dairy, raw cheese is such an amazing, um, health food that I'm going to call mm -hmm. it a health food because, um, what happens during the pasteurization process, and this is for like all pasteurized milk and dairy, um, it actually kills off a lot of the super beneficial, um, enzymes that mm -hmm. humans need to properly digest, which is again, another reason so, so many people have, um, intolerances and sensitivities when okay. it comes with, I have a intolerance to cow's milk. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen it, I've had blood work done and I've experienced it many, many times. And I love pizza so much. I would still, you know, torture myself and eat pizza once a month and then pay the price. Yeah you know, badly for the next couple yeah. of days. But when I eat raw dairy product, um, raw milk and raw um, cheddar cheese, I don't know if you have access to that there, but just in general, this information is yeah. good to know. Um, your, my body can handle it and, and digest it so, so, so much better. So mm -hmm. if there's any health food store where you can find raw cheese or raw milk, I am a, a high, um, I would highly recommend if, if you know, you don't have like a crazy allergy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, use it in moderation. It, it is good fats. An organic stream cheese is a great snack. If you're on the go, mm -hmm. um, it can help satiate you. Fat is really what's going to help you curb those sugar cravings um, and just keep you full. So um, if you can handle, if you can handle some cheese and milk, do it, get some yeah. organic. Milk. Okay. I, I, like you said, I think the emphasis there again is, is, is each their own. I think that's going to be a, a huge, well, it is a pattern throughout this conversation, isn't it? Like what works for you might not work for me. Um, you might be able to eat cow's milk, drink cow's milk. I might not be able to. It's just figuring that out for yourself. And again, like we've said, you know, 36 years later on, still figuring that out and trying to, to understand our bodies. And, and, you know, everything's changing so much. I suppose one of the... The kind of final questions I've got now, I, I do honestly believe that this conversation is going to, uh, there's going to be more conversations about nutrition around school. It's going to get people thinking and I'm probably just gearing you up for the fact that I'm probably going to be calling you back with a list of questions. So we'll probably have another, another episode in the, uh, the pipeline. But um, a question that kind of came up in conversation when I've mentioned to, to staff that we were doing this, and this has mainly come from staff, is... We, I feel again, like this is when you, when I was younger, I was told, and we were all kind of told three meals a day, like you mm -hmm. want to eat three meals a day. Now for myself, as I was growing up and again, um, some, uh, digestion issues that I had when I was around about 15, 16, they, they prescribed me to actually eat smaller meals throughout the day. So I was looking at like five, five smaller meals a day. And now actually, when I think about what I eat and the volume of food I eat during the day I'm probably on anywhere between seven to nine meals a day but that's personally again for me and to help me function 
what what are your thoughts on that like the the three meals a day or is again and i can imagine that it's probably going to come down to you as a person and your own individual needs but yeah. if if you could only fit in three meals a day because you know you eat your breakfast at this time you get a lunch hour at this time and your dinner is at this time and you, you know because again currently in the pandemic eating in certain places is yeah. not permitted um obviously taking off masks here in hong kong is still a big thing what what would you say on that what are your thoughts there yeah um definitely this is going to be different for every person um your height your weight how active are you are you an athlete um if you're your age too i mean if you are a teenager i mean as all my friends with teenagers have told me like you know they just go through food so quickly because mm -hmm. they, it, your body is growing and changing so much and just utilizing so, so, so much energy that calorically you're going to need a lot more than someone, um, you know, my age. So mm -hmm. it just depends on your level of activity. Um, I would say if you, if you can get in three meals a day, that's, that's great. I would yeah. say three meals a day, um, definitely, definitely two meals. I mean, especially for for kids in school, you, you need to at least be having three. Now, if you are an athlete um, or like someone that's trying to like build and put on a muscle, like you are mm -hmm. as many meals as what's working for your body to achieve your goals. So it's, a, it's a really hard question to like give a general answer for, but yeah. for kids in school, you would, you need to at least be having three meals a day. And that doesn't mean, you know, three Thanksgiving, you guys don't have Thanksgiving, <laughs> but that's a really yeah. big meal. We have yeah. Yeah. Three giant meals. Um, yeah, like said, two hard boiled eggs is a perfect breakfast. See that there mm -hmm. you go. Meal number one. Cross it off your yeah. list. It doesn't need to be this thing that becomes so big and overthought and a big inconvenience. Um, but just solid nutrition three times a day. Yeah. Um, ideally more if you're if you're active and growing, which I'm sure all all the kids in your school are active and growing right now. So I would say aim for more, but three at the bare minimum. Yeah. And then that leads me in nicely to kind of the last question that came up. And I suppose I do like what you said there about, you know, you've this is your two hard boiled eggs, check it off your list. That's your breakfast sorted. How do, or how would you say habit can affect our nutrition? How habit? Yeah. So like, you know how, say you, you are in a habit of you don't eat breakfast you then go to work or school and the first time you eat something is 11 30 and then maybe you don't have anything again till maybe dinner at six that's kind of your your habit but then something changes I don't know in your life you you have a baby you join a sports team you have yeah. to you know you, you suddenly maybe become more active or like things shift mm -hmm. can that I feel you know, when things start to change and some people are good with change, some people aren't and their habits kind of have to alter. That's when we maybe could make poorer decisions. And that's when we reach yeah. for the, the Snickers bar or we need something quick on the way home. So we get something like you said, that's not nutritionally dense. Yeah. Is it is building good habits, like kind of with a time frame of when you eat or just, is it a habit of like you said, checking off? Do you think that ha has anything to do with it? Yeah. Like, well, obviously, the more chaotic our lives become, the easier it is to like let the self care practices slip. Mm -hmm. And I view nutrition as a a main form of self care. And my meal prepping is my number one um, form of self care because, mm -hmm. as I mentioned before, health is my highest value. So, um, you know, when things get chaotic, we need to be more intentional with our food. Um, mm -hmm. If you're if you are just sitting there overwhelmed with like, oh my gosh, I need to change, you know, all those things. That's not the case at all. You just, you start small to build a new habit. They say, the experts say, whoever the experts are, they say 21 days, that's your you know, window of time it takes to instill a new habit. So, you know, take three weeks to try one new habit. Say, yeah. start small. You know, I'm not a big advisor of like, we're gonna overhaul your whole entire life tomorrow. That's yeah. not sustainable. For three weeks, say, okay, I'm going to build this new habit into my life. I am going to make myself or pack myself a nutrient-dense breakfast four days a week for the next yeah. three weeks. 
Mm -hmm. something small and achievable and give it a good amount of time. Again, when I was talking about like breaking a fast food addiction, you need two, three weeks to even yeah. get on the other side of that chemical addiction so that mm -hmm. you can create that new habit, think without the brain fog and then move on. So start small, try to instill those new habits, just like one if it's just one meal yeah. a day or even snack a day, um, or even like a goal to drink this much water one day, it does not mm -hmm. have to be a complete overhaul, but give yourself some grace and, and time to get that going. And once I will promise you, it's so much easier once you're doing it to maintain than yeah. to completely. And especially when it comes to eliminating sugar, um, some people that I work with go, I just, I could never, I could never stop eating my chocolate every single night. I would yeah. just, and yeah. um, it's so much harder to stop than once you're doing it, your body, it comes back to homeostasis. You stop having those cravings and it's just easier. And your, your body starts actually asking for um, the nutrient dense food. So um, just give yourself grace and be patient. And just, I would say as like an end note, it's just, you know, love yourself enough to, to treat yourself right and to really, um, Think about all the goals and dreams you have. I'm sure all the kids watching, you know, you have dreams of like what you want to be, if you want to have a family, if you want to be a doctor, if you want to do this. This is our one vessel. You know, we only get one, I, I tell my clients. It's like if when you turn 16, someone gave you a brand new car and this is the one car you get for the rest of your life. It's like, how are you going to treat that car? If that's mm -hmm. the only one you have for your whole entire life, you're, you're sure as heck going to be changing that oil. You're going to be giving it yeah. regular water. You're going to be you know, taking care of all the bells and whistles so it lasts um, a lifetime. And that's kind of how we have to view our bodies. We don't get another one. Um, so we just have to love it and, and feed it all the nourishing foods so it can um, thrive and like take yeah. us, our people, take us to those later years so we can accomplish all those things that we want to do in life. So I try to view it like that when I'm having a hard day and I'm, you know, having the sugar cravings just to feed feed my vessel in the ways that serve me i think that is a, a, a more couldn't be a more perfect ending to a, like personally i think an absolutely brilliant episode here on uh, nattering with the knights it's been a a kind of whistle stop tour of of nutrition but i think having these conversations is something again that now as a teacher i'm reflecting on my time back at school and the things that we didn't really get an opportunity to learn and look into and I, whether that was again restraints on curriculum and teaching times whether it was the the knowledge and understanding of some of our teachers which is completely and utterly understandable as everything changes but I now hope that as a teacher that we can we're not just teaching what they need to know for exams we're kind of teaching them more about life and I mm. wish that I'd had something like this to be able to listen to or kind of get an understanding from and, and I think the the big the big kind of takeaways we can say from this is everybody's different everything works for for different people and you've you've kind of got to take note of what works for you and what doesn't and and if you know somebody is functioning off a diet that you don't maybe understand that's that's their choice and that's how they're choosing to live their life but I really couldn't agree more with what you've said there uh, particularly with you know, having had surgeries multiple times now, um, you only get one one body, you only get one shot. And I think a lot of us take that for granted. And if anything, I do hope that maybe this pandemic that a lot of us, we've never maybe lived through a pandemic before, that maybe this is just going to be a little bit more of an eye opener, that we can actually take control, we can take charge, and we can we can actually make ourselves like better and somewhat almost bulletproof to to oh, yeah. regular common illnesses. Now I'm just I'm digressing, I know, but since we've been yeah, having our conversations. Episode, I could talk about, you know, eating to boost our immune system for an hour. Yeah. That is huge. And and like you said, I, I think I think there's a handful of positives about um this pandemic. Um there's been a lot of negatives, but there are a handful of positives. And one you just said, people are looking at health differently now. Mm -hmm. um, I think more in the way that we all should be. It's not just about looking good and feeling good. That is like a happy byproduct of treating yourself right. Because when we are eating for function, um, our immune systems are just, as you said, bulletproof. 
Um, people that are, if you take COVID-19, for example, I mean, albeit there have been some very sick, you know, people, healthy people, but for the most part, the people that are running into the most problems are not treating themselves very yeah. well. They have diabetes, they're obese, they are not living um, in a way that is serving them. So, you know, when we think about it that way, how can I how can I treat myself so that when I come up against the big bug or whatever the case may be, um, you know, you have like head to toe armor on, you're ready to yeah. go, you're not scared because you've been doing all the things and your body will um, reciprocate that to you in, in keeping you healthy. And that's what I've experienced personally through this pandemic. Um, and a lot of people I know too, if you armor up in the right ways, um, you just have a better, you just have a better chance. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I cannot say thank you enough for one, spending your evening, my early morning with me doing this. And I know it's going to prompt more conversation and more questions. And I do feel that we'll be seeing you hopefully back on Nattering with the Night soon to, to discuss everything and anything nutrition. And what our listeners are probably noticing is that this is a conversation we have quite commonly, like it's a natural conversation for us and we could talk for hours and hours. It brings up different questions. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that I, I particularly enjoy about this now is, and we, we've, we've shared this backwards and forwards that because we share in this and obviously through your passion with it, it's, it's then given me enough knowledge to take it away and implement it in my own life. And hopefully just maybe like you said, one of these minor little changes that a student or a staff member or a listener can make will then have a positive impact that will start this like kind of snowball effect of getting more, more in tune with yourself so that you can be the best version of you. So yeah. thank you so much, Katie. I oh, really, me. really appreciate it. And, Hong Kong. And, <laughs> and one last thing, we obviously um, have not had a chance to mention it yet, but you obviously have your own Instagram page and you're in the process of setting up your website. So if our lis listeners wanted to, you know, follow you and see kind of a little bit of insight into your, your daily life of nutrition with your two beautiful children and your family, where would they find you? Yeah. So I am in the process of getting my website um, up and running, back up and running right now, I should say. Um, so the best place to follow me is on Instagram right now. Um, it's the fab foodie mama, the fab F A B foodie F O O D I E mama M A M A. And I love to post recipes. I love to post, um, you know, tips about supplements, what we're doing, um, getting our vitamin D exercise regimes, um, everything about nutrition and wellness, everything under that umbrella, um, I will post about and talk about. So if you're interested in that, I would love to see you on Instagram. You're welcome to direct message me if you have questions or want to connect um, more. I'm just happy to be here and serve um, however I possibly can. And I think a good, a good thing about that, and I'm not just saying this because, you know, you are one of my best friends here, is that it's a, it's a real life account. There's no, there's no filter there. There's no, like, it's, there's, you're not, you know, being sponsored by certain things. You are just literally sharing what works for you and your family. And there's like, there's recipe ideas that I've used that are great to, you know, use food prep for the, the entire week. There's just little things, takeaways that you can have. And, and I think it's great to, to know, particularly for our listeners, because we've got a whole thing of social media, you know, you show the highlights, the best parts, but this is genuinely an unfiltered account of, of you as a nutritionist, but also as a mum, um, yeah. building two very healthy, beautiful toddlers, but they're also on this journey already of building an understanding of what helps them have healthy, strong bodies. So if you do get a chance, uh, those of you that are listening, do check out Katie's Instagram, It'll give you plenty of inspiration. And again, one last time from me, thank you so much. And uh, I can't wait to have you back on soon. Yes, I would love to come back. Thanks for having me. No, right.